Hey everybody, if you watched last week's video, you'll have heard our big news that we decided to sell our Eldis 150 Majestic 7.4 meter motorhome. So in today's video, I want to outline five ways that you can sell your motorhome. And I also want to share with you exactly what we did and some of the important tips in the hope that this helps and inspires you if you ever decide to sell your motorhome or camper van or are interested in how it can be done. We're James and Rob, and this is our dog, Oscar. It's a really steep learning curve when you start your motorhome, camper van, or caravan journey, and there is lots that we wish we had known. So we decided to document what we have learned and share with you our adventures as we head out on the road again. We just sold our 2021 Eldis Majestic 7.4 meter motorhome. Now we decided that we wanted to downsize from a motorhome to a camper van for a number of reasons. First of all, we decided that the van was just too big for our needs. And to be honest, James didn't really like driving it. You know, most of the UK roads, whether you're in Scotland or Cornwall, you're gonna be driving down quite narrow roads. And he didn't really feel confident doing that. And there was a few times when I was driving when I just wanted to close my eyes and hope. And it was, to be honest, it was more to do with the width of the van than it was to do with the length of the van. And the other thing that we found was that when we are on site, um, and the site that we're on isn't near a town or anything, we often wanted to drive there. And we didn't necessarily want to use our electric bikes, although of course we did them, but that's only gonna take you so far, especially when you've got a 15 kilo old dog. And we also didn't wanna use public transport or rely on public transport or taxis. So we felt like what we want, really wanted to do was to be able to pack up a van and drive it and use it like a car. And when we were in Scotland last year, we found that we could do that a couple of times because of course Scotland is so much more accommodating to motorhomes and camper vans than England is. But we decided anyway that what would suit us was being able to pack up our van while we we're on site and go and drive it for the day and use it more like a second car. And having a smaller van was definitely gonna enable us to do that. So that's why we decided to sell our van. And I'm gonna give you a number of tips through this video. And the first one is that you learn what you need and what you want after using a motorhome or a camper van for a while. So my advice to you is if, you think, if you're thinking about buying one is to hire a motorhome first of all for a couple of weeks to get a sense of what you like and what you don't like, what's non-negotiable and what's negotiable in the features that you have. And I think you can only really establish that once you start using a camper van or a motorhome, even if you think you know what you want by doing a ton of research, the reality is that you won't really find out what you need until you start using it. So hire a camper van. Now we didn't do that, partly because it was so expensive last year to hire a camper van, but we should have done that. And that's what I would go back and tell myself to do. And that's the advice I would give you. So let me kick off by telling you about five options that you have to sell your motorhome or camper van. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna tell you exactly what we did and how it all played out. So firstly, whatever way you choose to go, you want to make sure you're getting top dollar for your van. So that all starts by turning your motorhome or your camper van back into a show home. Now our van was fairly new, it was less than a year old, and it was also in very good condition, but we still had a few jobs to do. We were lucky that we didn't have any major issues when we bought our van, but we did have a couple of issues, a broken TV aerial socket and also a decorative piece of wood that was coming away from the wall. Now we'd reported these to Marcus right back when we first picked up the van, but we still haven't heard from them over a year later, which is crazy, right? But I guess that's just the state of the world right now. So make sure you fix any cosmetic issues like this because you don't wanna give your potential buyer any excuses to start knocking you down on price. Then you of course wanna make sure that you clean everything. We took all the carpets out, we took them home and we used a carpet cleaner to clean them so they look like new. And you also want to make sure that you remove every trace of you. Those knickknacks that help you make your van home, make it home for you, but it may look cluttered to a potential buyer. So you want to inspire your potential buyer of how they can put their belongings in the van. And the best way to do that is to give them a blank canvas. So we took everything off. Some of the hooks that we put up, some of the shoe attachments we put up, we took them all off to give a really blank clean slate so it looked like a brand new van. So having done this, you now need to decide how you're going to sell your motorhome. And I'm gonna outline these in order of where I think you can make the most money, but it's also worth noting that the more money you make, 
the more potential responsibility you have to take and also the more hassle you're going to have to deal with. So you have to decide whether you want top dollar and no has uh, and lots of hassle or sell it for a reasonable price and have no hassle. So the first strategy is to sell your van privately and sell it via something like a Facebook group. So before you start spending any money on advertising or losing money by selling through a dealer, you should definitely give it a go and try and sell it yourself. Now at the time of this video going live, it's definitely a seller's market. There is a massive shortage of vans and a big delay on deliveries right now. So it shouldn't be difficult to sell it yourself. So you really wanna give that a go. But don't get, don't get overwhelmed with this because my advice would be just to simply start by promoting your van in some of the appropriate Facebook groups that you're probably already a member of. Now obviously you want to promote it in Facebook groups that allow you to do that kind of promotion. And you also want to focus on the groups that would have your potential buyers as members. Now to write your ad for that, you wanna go back to the dealership website where you bought your van from and look at the blurb that they use to sell your van and reuse that, especially the spec that they share because people are gonna be interested in height, width, um, all those dimensions, the engine size and so on. You also wanna make sure that you take as many photos as you can and you wanna put this all together with vital information such as the year you purchased it and the mileage and then promote that into the appropriate Facebook groups. Now, if, it, if it's anything like us, when we promoted it, you're gonna get a lot of people sending you messages and commenting on the ad. And if that's the case, you can prepare some responses that you can just copy and paste so you're not constantly having to write a new message. Because a lot of the time, people are asking the same questions like, is it available? What's the price? Even though you probably put it in the ad. So it's important that you say yes to all of this when someone asks, is it still available? So that others can see that, even if that person wasn't serious. So let me share with you my next tip, which is to know the exact minimum price you're willing to take because most people are gonna give you an offer that's less than the asking price. So it's important that you know in your mind what's the lowest price point you'd be willing to take so you don't waste your time. So if someone makes you an offer, then ask them for a deposit so that you can separate the time wasters from those serious buyers and make sure that you have the full money in your bank before you allow them to drive off. Ask them to do a BAX transfer and then check the money is in your account before you hand over the keys, or if they're a cash buyer, then you need to go to the bank with them to make that deposit. And of course, if they pay by check, then the money has to be cleared in your account before you let them drive off. Don't be pressurized or don't be fooled by their charm. This is a business transaction, just like you wouldn't hand over the keys to your house until all the money's had cleared. So that's strategy number one, selling privately via Facebook groups. Strategy number two is selling it yourself via an auto trader ad. So if you've tried the Facebook approach and it doesn't work, then the next step would be to create and place an ad on auto trader, which is the place that everybody goes when they're looking for a new car or new motorhome. And because of that, this is gonna reach an awful lot of people. I don't know about you, but I've got certain vans bookmarked on Autotrader, so I get alerts when a new van comes on the market just because I'm always interested. And I'm sure lots of other people do that. And of course, dealers are also looking on Autotrader as well. Now, as I mentioned with the Facebook ad, take your time in writing a detailed ad and clear copy and put as many pictures as possible. I'd also advise you to shoot a video, uh, like a walk around video of your van or your motorhome, because I think that really helps people get a better sense of what they might be buying. Now, if you watched last week's video, you'll know that I made a video just like this, a walk around video in preparation for us creating an auto trader ad, which in the end we didn't need to use because we sold via Facebook. And I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. Now you've got various options for your auto trader ad. So you can start at just £14.95 for a two week ad and you can go up to £24.95 for a six week ad, including that video. So it really isn't expensive to do. Now the third sales strategy is to sell via a broker like motorhomedepot.com. Now they're typically gonna take an eight to 10% commission, but of course they're also gonna take the hassle out of you selling and managing the cash transaction and doing the actual handover of the van. But the reality is, to be quite honest, all they're really gonna do is advertise it on their own website and then put it on as an auto trader ad. So they're pretty much doing the same thing that you could do. So the question is, would you rather take this route and avoid any of the hassle around transacting with the buyer 
And are you happy to pay an eight to 10% fee for this? If your answer is yes, then using a broker like motorhomedepot.com, and I'm not um, an affiliate or anything for them, it's just one that we looked at, that is a good idea. The other thing to be aware of is that they would value your van at the bottom end of its true value so they can make a quick sell. So for example, I ended up selling my van for three and a half thousand pounds more than Motorhome Depot valued it at. Now at this point, I also need to mention companies like WeBuyAnyVan.com. I wouldn't recommend this unless you're absolutely desperate. I don't really have any direct experience of using that kind of company, but anecdotally listening to other people, they'll value your motorhome quite high at the beginning, and then when they see it, they'll actually offer you a lower amount. So I'm not sure that this is the best route to go unless you're truly desperate and you need to make a really quick sale. So the next option you can look at, which perhaps is the easiest and the safest option, is to sell your van to a dealer. And right now, many dealers would be really interested in your motorhome because they have a massive shortage of stock. So it shouldn't be too difficult to find a dealer. And of course, your first port of call would be the dealership that you actually bought your motorhome or camper from. Now you just need to be mindful here that they need to make their money. So they're gonna offer you the absolute lowest value so that they can add their markup to it. And they would sell at a similar price that you'd probably be able to get if you marketed and sold your van privately. To give you an idea of this, we went to a few dealers when we were selling our motorhome and they offered us around 10,000 pounds less than we paid for our van and what we sold it for in the end. So whilst it would have been a really straightforward transaction, I wanted to first give a try of the other options above. Um, before going down this route because £10,000 is quite a lot of money to lose. Now, as it turns out, we ended up selling our van for exactly the same price we paid for it with 3,000 miles on the clock and it being a 2021 model. So I'm glad that we didn't go through the dealership, but we did talk to a few dealers. Now, the other way that you can sell your van to a dealership is by making it a part exchange in return for a new van. Now again, remember that a part exchange price is never gonna be the same price that you would see when you're buying a van on a forecourt. Motorhome dealers are businesses that expect to make a profit, so you can understand that. Make sure you're entirely clear and honest with the dealer about any additions to your van or any things that need fixing because you don't want them to have any surprises which results in them walking away from the part exchange or lowering their offer price. Remember this is a negotiation and the salesperson you're dealing with will be used to negotiating. So make sure that you don't just accept the first offer but you negotiate, especially if, you, if they're gonna be making a sale of another van to you. So selling to a dealer one way or another is definitely the least hassle way of getting rid of your motorhome, but you have to put a price on that, which is often 10 to 20% lower than you would get if you sold your van privately. So that's the five ways that you can sell your motorhome or your camper van. And let me now tell you exactly what we did and exactly what happened. So first of all, we were conscious about the time of year that we sold our van. And if you've watched any previous videos, you know that I spent a month in South Africa from mid January to mid February. So the intention was always to sell the van as soon as I got back because people start thinking about their plans for the year in early spring. So that's a fantastic time to sell. And you're more likely to get top dollar for a van if you sell it at this time of year and people can start using it straight away rather than selling it in the autumn or winter where people are less likely to use the van, but they'll also have to think about storage costs if they can't keep the van on their drive or at their house. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and sell then, it's just I want to give you the best chance of selling your van easily and get as much money as possible, so that's what we decided to do. So as soon as I got back from South Africa in late February, we spent the weekend cleaning the van and clearing out the van and cleaning it up and fixing a couple of things as I've already outlined. And we found a really sunny day to take pictures and do that walk around video that I suggested um, that you do. And we did that in preparation to sell on Auto Trader. Now we knew that we wanted to try and sell the van privately because we'd had a couple of quotes from dealers and we'd also spoken to Motorhome Depot and they were all fairly low. And I have to say, actually in Motorhome Depot's defense, that was probably the higher price compared to the dealers, but we were still gonna lose three or 4,000 pounds. So we decided to follow the route I've outlined above and first try our hand in a few Facebook groups to gauge the interest. And then if that didn't work, we were ready to place the Auto Trader ad. 
but as it turns out we didn't need to do this as you will see so we first selected a couple of Facebook groups to put the van on. As you know, our van it was an Eldis 150 and there are a couple of Eldis Facebook groups that we posted on as well as a sort of sell your motorhome group. And a tip here is to make sure that you know the rules of the group and when and if you can actually promote your motorhome. Some groups will have specific days and some groups don't allow it at all. So we posted our ad on the Facebook groups and literally within minutes, I was starting to get private messages and comments, which I was really surprised at. I think about 80% of those messages went nowhere and they were time wasters. Maybe 10% of those did engage in a dialogue, but they wanted to knock me down significantly on price. And there were also quite a few serious inquiries as well. In the end, we sold to a chap from the north of England, we're down in Brighton, who arranged to come down the following week and to show his seriousness, he made a deposit of £500 to us. Now, he did knock me down a little on price, but because we were clear about our minimum price, I was willing to do that because at the end of the day, everybody wants to feel that they are getting a good deal, right? And tip here is make sure you've agreed exactly what you're going to sell with the van. Does it include things like bike racks or the electric cables? And then make sure that you've cleared out your van because once it's gone, it's gone and you can't get stuff back if you've left it in there. So the following week, this chap came down to view the van. He didn't even want to do a test drive. He just started the van to make sure the engine sounded fine. He was a car dealership owner, by the way, so he knew what he was talking about. And he checked the mileage and he obviously looked around the van to make sure it was in the condition that we had said it was. I mean, then did a BAX transfer. And then we also went on the DVLA website to do a file a change of ownership. So tip here is to make sure on the day that you sell that you have internet access so you can do this. To be honest, it was all really straightforward. And again, you need to be really strong when it comes to haggling because the day before he came down, he wanted to try and lower the price again, saying how much it was gonna cost him to travel down there and all the rest of it. I stood my ground and said no, because I was willing to walk away. And so he did buy the price that we had originally agreed. Now, was I lucky with this buyer? Maybe. I've heard a few horror stories of people selling privately and you know being screwed, but at the end of the day, I'm a business burner and there was no way I was going to sell less the van for less than I felt the van was worth. And also there was no way I was going to let him leave until I could literally see the money in my bank account. Tip here, don't be intimidated by a buyer and don't let that don't let them play games with you by trying to drop the price at the last minute always be prepared to walk away. There will always be another buyer out there. So that was it. I stood there as he drove off in our van and we were ready for our next adventure. Talking of which, in next week's video, I'm gonna tell you more about the camper van that we have ordered, what we like about it, and I'm also gonna do a kind of tour showing you around the van as well. Now, if you'd like to download our free guide on preparing and selling your van, then check out the link below and you can download it from there. But other than that, we will see you next week as we head out on the road again.